Now, again, this is another dramatic monologue in the Poems of the Decade anthology. And so we're looking for ways in which, as readers, we develop a relationship with the speaker in the poem in almost exactly the same way as we would develop a relationship with an actor on stage in this moment of monologue when we hear more about their thoughts, their feelings, their ideas, their intentions. So it's an excellent example, really, to draw an opportunity to, to look at some of the perhaps more spoken features of this to make it into a text that is cultivating a personal connection between the persona owner and the writer and the reader themselves. And there is a moment of connection here because ultimately this is a poem about everyday experience. It's a poem about how somebody feels about their everyday life. So ultimately the purpose of this is to connect with people who also have everyday lives. Which brings me on to the use of irregular structure. And what's quite interesting here is that you will read a lot of critique online that tries to use irregular structure as a way of making interpretations about the mundanity, the regularity of life, um, and the ways in which because this poem uses an irregular structure, it is suggesting that in some way life is irregular. But actually when you drill down in this poem, when you look at some of the ways in which the writer speaks about life in this poem, she's actually embracing the fact that there is no irregularity. It's actually very regular. And it's those elements of regularity and mundanity that perhaps some people are trying to avoid that she is actually embracing and has come to realize that this is actually a way in which she's found meaning in her life. So it becomes difficult if we suggest that the irregular structure is a way of suggesting irregularity in day-to-day -day life, because actually it contravenes some of the the key themes that she wants to emphasise in the poem. There is, however, the use of frequent pauses and breaks, which really does place emphasis on certain shifts and, and aspects of this poem that the, the narrator wants to really highlight as being relevant to the reader. So the disruption to some of the, um, to some of the other structures is important, particularly when we come to look at Cesura. She opens the poem with the use of the verb observed and best observed on stage and we draw emphasis at this point that is the central kind of word on that first opening line and there's that kind of focalization into that main point in the line as if she becomes the the focus is observation and where we've seen voyeurism and observation be crucial to some of the interpretations in this anthology it's interesting to note here that the observation is something that she has succumbed to that she has embraced even though perhaps it's not an observation that puts her on show in a certain way some of the interesting use of imagery here the propping up a sphere, a sphere the endless entrances and exits the servants patter all of these place emphasis on the ancillary role that she plays not just in life but there is this kind of ongoing conceit drawn out metaphor of relating everyday life to being a performance in some way. She talks about the use of entrances and exits in an interesting way, this obviously being an intertextual reference to Shakespeare. And at this point, we get this notion that, again, in the way that Shakespeare wanted to draw the connection between life and performance, the writer is offering us this kind of renewed, reinvigorated a vowel of this link she wants to also kind of support this idea that yeah absolutely life is a performance and in this performance she is quite happy to be an extra she's propping up a spear she's a servant in the background so this imagery of, of helping almost the imagery of being this kind of extra character is something that she really wants to to embrace and explore in more detail she integrates the kind of narrative voice of yes sir no sir these kind of filler lines essentially within a script that are essential to make characterization and narrative and atmosphere and um, so much more effective but they're not the standout monologues they're not the they're not the star roles these midget moments that she calls them i think this is a really nice phrase actually and it's emphasized a lot by the alliteration in this um in this line but the midget moments if they're wrong then the monstrous fabric shrimps to unwanted sniggers um, and again, the, the sort of the contrast with the alliteration and the sibilance there is, is really quite interesting. And there's that sense of grandeur and importance. She's almost placed in juxtaposition on the midget and the monstrous that should she get her tiny little role wrong, then it will have such larger repercussions. And again, if we look at this through a metaphorical perspective, there is the notion that whilst we might go on to our day to day lives doing every day what seems like meaningless actions, 
they actually contribute to a much larger functioning that would go wrong if we were not to consider those actions as significant, even if they are insignificant.